This meeting is being recorded. Okay, let's uh, get started. It is August 19th, 2022 for the record books. <laughs> I'm Scott. This is Ben. Hello. Ben, you look like you're from a different location again today. I am. like to Un- uh, mix it up. Undisclosed location? Undisclosed location. You got okay. it. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> uh, you look like you're in my grandma's dining room or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you like the dark, the dark colors. I'm trying hey, to match the dark. your background. Hey, that's so early two thousands. <laughs> and the ketchup and mustard. I bet you have like a yellow wall. Yeah, you know, like in the <laughs> something like that somewhere else. Yeah, that's it. All right, we digress. Uh, how was the week? Pretty good. Pretty busy. Um, Lots uh, continue to go on in the world. Mostly continue to watch central bankers, uh, CPI, PPI, what's happened with inflation and inflation on prices and energy. And yeah, I think uh, that's been grabbing most of my attention. We've we, we saw a pretty pretty big move in in stocks and bonds since the middle of June uh, up until um, a couple of days ago, I guess. So that's been really what I've been tracking here. Is this this ongoing debate between what's is our central banks going to ease off now that inflation's eased off, or is this temporary? So I think that's what, where I've been seeing and spending most of my time uh, on what uh, what's happening in the world right now. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, sorry, as I just fixed my screen here, I'm a no, bit no uh, janky. Um, yeah. So as far as uh, portfolios are concerned this week is another quality quiet week probably pretty quiet week so one of the things um you know you're always trying to find something where there's some opportunities with pretty good risk rewards and one of the things that uh i've been kind of tracking for a while is activision blizzard is being acquired by microsoft so they announced that a couple of months ago and so there seems like there's uh, this this fear that the deal is not going to happen because Competition Bureau is going to stamp it out. So it's trading at something around a 25% discount to where Microsoft is going to do an all-cash deal. So I did sell a little bit of uh, SHY short-term bonds in the U.S. and bought some Activision, Activision Blizzard. Mm-hmm. Um, from the research that I read, seems like the probabilities are quite high that the deal will close. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, uh, so I made that switch. I mean, Microsoft or Activision Blizzard are great companies. <laughs> um, so when you, when you look at it from a risk reward perspective, it looks pretty good right now. Awesome. Good stuff. What else was, uh, was grabbing your attention this, this week? We were just talking off the top there, the meme stops, sir. Meme stocks are back. Is that just cause, uh, you know, slow time, the, uh, the Reddit uh, crowd is getting bored or what's, what's going on? Yeah. So we have, because we've had a reasonable rally too. So it seems like there's some excitement fired up back in the Reddit streams. The tension's coming back to that. You know, it's, it's interesting how that they still have the ability to swing it. And so, you know, there's this ongoing debate around who's moving the stocks, but ultimately I think it is the Reddit crowd that sends the signals and then, as we talked about before, the major market makers of these stocks front run the signals. So, you know, where they they take the signal from them, they like the idea, they think it's getting enough attention, they front run the trades, drive the stock up, and then we see what happened. It, it got obliterated as well, um, down kind of, I think, 40% overnight and something like 70% off the highest of the week. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah uh okay okay if anybody has any questions certainly put them in here or anything you guys want us to touch on uh other than that i think we'll uh it'll be a pretty quick one today uh so, I, well yeah, i guess that depends on ben's charts never okay. know <laughs> how, how many charts has he brought us today a baker's dozen or we got two or three yeah what do we got today uh i think we have four today let's see if we're uh ready for the charts yeah, yeah, let's get, get into, into the charts. Let's go. Let's okay. get into it. Mm-hmm. 
know, working with the one screen again. I always uh, forget how, yeah. to do, how to do this. Just back on the meme uh, thing, I was I was telling Ben that before we hit record here that somebody made 110 million, but uh, I was wrong. I guess it was 59 million. He made okay. a 20 year old <laughs> on that trade. Pretty good. Yeah, I guess. I'm not sure I would have made the right moves with 59 million at 20. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Exactly. Yeah. Can you see? Uh, let me know if you can see the screen there. Uh, yeah. Go no? ahead. Yeah. Yeah, you yep. can see so. the presentation. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, so um, there's a few things I want to touch on, but um, lots of the questions continue around housing market, what's happening, uh, what future rates are looking like. Uh, this is a great chart from Julian Brigden, put this out earlier this week, just with a view of, you know, rates are going up. So this is kind of the inverse of what you would think. So as, as rates start to, you know, point up, there's going to be a likely a probability that something's going to happen. That's going to set that uh, set the the balance in the wrong directions, and you know based on what the euro dollar is showing shows that rates start to drop sometime early next year, and so that's the view that they're going to start cutting rates uh, based on tightening too much, and I don't think that views change too much, um, but uh, I thought this was a great chart and a way of looking at it. Yeah, good. Um, so housing is a big part of obviously what's happening in Canada and the U.S. right now. You know, I read a good stat today just talking about, uh, you know, the risk with the housing market. So I do start and have started to get quite a few more questions just about is this going to be like 2008? Are we going to get that same kind of correction? And because Canada hasn't seen it yet, uh, I, I think is the correction going to be worse? And so with the U.S., uh, I think the stat somewhere around 35% of homes in the U.S. are owned outright. Um, that mm -hmm. statistic's up a lot um, from where it was before. So I think there's quite a bit more of a, of a higher floor than we, than we would have seen um, in 2008 and not nearly the leverage that we saw in 2008. But as, as I say that, the, still the direction is down. And so as I why I put this uh, chart up, it just shows you like you're seeing uh, you're seeing prices start to come down. You're seeing markdowns for the first time in in a couple of years. And, uh, you know, I think this is a signal of what higher prices is doing. Um, and uh, so I thought this was interesting and worthwhile putting up. Yeah. The other thing, the other thing about the Canadian market is RBC put out a report this week, which uh, I think I referenced in one of the dailies, is that they're talking about just kind of the setup with with demographics um, and uh, immigration putting a floor under prices in Canada. So I thought that was interesting as well, and probably you know dispels some of the myth that we're going to see you know 40 50 percent correction in housing which mm -hmm. some might some might think so i i'd lean somewhere closer to that camp as well mm. okay uh so so last uh thing um uh, sorry last last thing kind of on the financial piece is you know i just should look I get lots of questions about what you know what are bank accounts paying and things like that and so this is uh, uh, somebody had posted this chart just to show what the banks are paying on on savings accounts and things like that. This is U.S. savings accounts. So essentially, they're paying nothing, even though the rates have moved dramatically higher. Um, but the same thing that uh, we noticed this week, uh, Scott, as we were looking at GIC rates, right, for coins. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. yeah, the banks are super hungry for deposits, Canadian banks. And, and so you see their their yields on the GICs, like I think we looked at RBC and uh, Scotiabank um, were, you know, on the five year, they had the highest rates, um, even higher than the kind of the second and third tier issuers. Um, so it looks like they're quite hungry for deposits and some certainty on, you know, four or five years out. Um, so that's a, a noteworthy and something kind of to pay attention to with uh, the health of the banks right now. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Good.
So last two, just a quick chart on uh, this is NFTs and continue to follow this and track this. You know, this is the, these are the most active ones um, this year. Um, and, you know, what, what I, what I kind of pay attention to a little bit here is, you know, are all of them coming down together or are there some others that have hung in there? And so, as you'll note, as you go down kind of this column here, that's a year to date numbers. So quite, there's still quite a bit of activity, but what's interesting is some of the, which, you know, people would have said earlier in the year, the high quality NFTs, they've actually hung in better than some of the, uh, some of the growth stocks that are in the market and some of the markets themselves. So, you know, you look at something like this, which is a, a board ape, if you follow that, you know, down 5% year to date, which is nothing compared to the, the risk that we've had in the market so far this year. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So the last thing, you know, so we've been, we've been having cl uh, clients ask just about the, some of the features that the bank has as well. So we've had quite a few clients that are considering opening their bank accounts with national bank. So just wanted to put this out as one of the things that, um, you know, as we've found clients this year, we're starting to have some, <clears throat> excuse me, tell us that they've been losing their GP um, because they're downsizing. They don't have the ability to, uh, you know, the, the doctors don't have the ability to continue to service all um, their clients. And so as part of National Bank, if you have a bank account with National Bank, one of the things that you off they offer is a dialogue access, which gives you the ability to talk 24 seven with a nurse, ask some questions. It's an interesting solution that's not specifically financial related, um, but something that I thought was worth uh, worth mentioning. Yeah, that's good. Really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. You're hearing more and more of that, eh? like GPs uh, scaling back yeah. their patient size, right? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's interesting. Someone had, someone had a question, it looks like there. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look here. Lyle. Mm -hmm. Rosenberg says a Canadian recession is inevitable and it will be much worse than it is in the U.S. What does that mean for the markets? Yeah, so Rosenberg does a great analysis, as we've talked about before. I think he is one of the best for kind of parsing the, the data of the economy and certainly looking at the historical data as well. So uh, certainly respect what he says and what he writes. And he, you know, he did a good analysis to show what the potential breakdown is and it's multiple percentage points of GDP impact based on the recession that, that uh, is coming. And, you know, I think we're in the early stages of it. And I think the pace of it certainly is, is where the question mark is right now. And so, do the banks continue to aggressively tighten rates is the big question, I think, outstanding. And so with this market rally since the kind of middle of June, where we'll say they pivoted a little bit, central banks, um, it's made it a bit more t difficult for them um, because I think they would have liked to seen kind of sideways to down markets into what's happened. But because they've seen this rally and we'll say risk assets, uh, it's put a lot of pressure on them to continue to raise rates. So um you know i think the the depth of it uh canada is at risk i think one of the uh, i'd say outsized potential risk for the Canadian market is the energy and so you know we, we generate a tremendous amount of income from energy and, and mining and metals in canada and so if we see uh we'll say a ceasefire or agreement in in russia and ukraine i think that would have a material impact on oil prices um, and that would be a big negative. So if you piggyback that on top of the housing slowdown because of higher rates and things like that, I think it could be deep, but I think with probabilities continue to lie with, they'll make an adjustment to rate sometime early next year. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of ground to cover between now and then, but I think uh, we're in the recession right now, early days of it probably have a couple of quarters of it and the depth of it's really going to matter. So what the central bank, particularly in the Canadian central bank says for, for us in September, I think it's going to be important to see where they take it from here. 
Um, but uh, you know, Macklin's been in the in this position to uh, you know he was in 2020 and made the decision to aggressively cut when when they needed to. I think he'd make that decision again. Gotcha. Okay, hopefully uh, that answers your question, Lyle. Um, moving, looking ahead to next week. What do we, I think, is that the last week of August next week? Last full uh, week al- of August. Almost, yeah. I think yeah, we yeah, have yeah. three, three, uh, three yeah. days the following week of August. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so today was a big options expiry day. So, right. yeah, yeah, so that, I think, created a bit, a little bit more volatility um, some profit taking volumes are still lighter in August. Now, September always tends to be quite a bit more active. We have central bank meetings um, the world over. Uh, I think a reference there that Turkey rate or cut rates this this uh, this week for the first time. So and that's not a real material change because that country is in a much different situation than most developed markets. Um, but I think that with September coming ahead, there's a lot to pay attention to. And, you know, as I look at the trends in the bonds, and we haven't talked about bonds too much in the last couple of weeks, but, you know, the U.S. 10-year bond still looks like uh, they've put the high was put in in the middle of June, and we've continued to hold that trend line. And so it looks like most levels on bonds have reached kind of the, the top of the range where we are today. So I continue to watch that. And if there's a break in anything there, it may change my view. But right now, it looks like bonds have been holding the highs of June. And so we're, uh, we're, I think, in a good position to benefit from that and still look for where the opportunities with companies. So as I mentioned, Activision Blizzard, that's a unique, interesting idea that comes into, you know, the market at a time where it's hard to you know, it's hard to have opportunities that are 20, 25% upside with uh, with pretty low downside risk at this point. So we'll continue to look for things like that. Gotcha. Uh, the other thing we should mention too, I think we mentioned it last week, but uh, with college and university students going back, our ESPs uh, season is here. So meaning, you know, a lot of people require money to send their kids. So uh, as I mentioned the last week, it's about a two week turnover. It's usually less, but I would say count on two weeks um, between process time and getting your money just because it's a busy, busy time for that department. So uh, all you got to do is drop us a note and send us the letter of uh, what is it called? Proof letter of, of acceptance. Of yeah. The, yeah, I guess we're, yeah, the letter of enrollment. And uh, that's all we need. All right, Ben, is that it? Anybody else? You got anything else? No, I think that's it for today. Gonna gonna try to enjoy one of the last weekends of the summer. I hope so. Are you? Yeah, a big soccer tournament uh, tomorrow to end off the soccer season, and Excellent. hockey tryouts start next weekend. So, exactly. we're into it. Yeah, that's it. You know that's all about it. that. I do indeed. Okay, everybody. Well, thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week. Sounds good. Thanks. Take care, everybody.